Well, good evening, everybody. Am I on? Now I am. I don't know, I guess the switch didn't go all the way. Let's try that again. Good evening, everybody. It's fun to actually spend an evening in Lent with you all. Gosh, have I missed you during the weekdays. Um, it, is, it is wonderful to be here tonight to, to worship as we enter um, into the, the final days of Holy Week. And personally, I think Monday, Thursday might be my favorite, my favorite church service of the entire year because even though we know what is, what is coming and what is happening tomorrow um, on Good Friday, there's still so much warmth and so much love that happens on Monday, Thursday between Jesus and his disciples that carries and spills out even into Good Friday and I think makes it even more powerful. So I thank you all for being here tonight and joining us. We will begin with confession and forgiveness, and you can find that on page 258 in the front of your hymnals. And I invite you to stand with me too. And I feel like being extra close tonight. We begin our worship this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so we, we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And we join in singing our opening hymn, number 358.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's join now together in our prayer of the day. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, amen. Congregation, you may be seated. And our first reading tonight is from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your, I am your servant, the child of your serving maid. You have loosed my bonds, and I will offer you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. And our gospel tonight comes from John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17 and 31 through 35. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in who, having loved his own who were in the world, <laughs> he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he had said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are no greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you, know, if you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him once more. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. 
You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. And now we'll sing hymn number 708, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. I'll tell you what, based on what Jesus did tonight, it doesn't feel super appropriate for me to stand all the way up there while you are down here. And while I realize I'm making history where I might be the first preacher who ever sat down and preached a sermon here at Zion Lutheran Church, here we are. You know, Jesus was awfully good at setting precedent too. <laughs> well, grace and peace to you all this evening in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. I've always wondered um, why, why Jesus would choose to undertake all of this on the final night of his life with his disciples and his dear friends. It's, it's a little bit hidden, but you would think, well, why does Jesus want to eat this why does Jesus want to do this meal? And you're like, well, it's Passover, right? He's just being a good observant Jew. Um, but this is actually the night before Passover. So this is something entirely different. And in what we hear tonight in John's gospel, there's no mention of communion. There's no mention of breaking the bread and the, and the wine. We just have a meal and we just have the washing of feet and dear friends around a table gathered once more. And I think what's, what really speaks to me about Jesus and why he wanted to do all of this is he just wanted his disciples to have some closure. He wanted them to know that they were gonna be okay. He's been telling, about, telling them about what's going to happen to him over and over and over again. And they're like, yeah, Jesus, I'm sure, I'm sure you're gonna die and you're gonna raise again. And all of a sudden, it's starting to feel really, really real as 
the Pharisees are sort of bearing down on top of them, and they notice that something strange is going on with Judas. It must have been a really, really eerie feeling. And so I think the commandment to love one another as I have loved you, it can seem really simple, like, oh, we're washing each other's feet and we're feeding one another. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what being good in this commandment is. It's washing feet and going to communion and spending time with Jesus. But I really think it's so much bigger than that because in the end, it's really not that much about us at all in the grand scheme of things. The whole purpose of this, of this story and this night is to watch how Jesus acts and behaves as he tries to reassure them, that he wants them to have closure, he cares for them without correction, he wants them to know that they're all gonna be okay and also nestled in, in between here is talk of betrayal and denial from Judas, but also Peter, who loves him the most, who is so sure that he is going to stick by Jesus and nothing is ever going to go wrong. No harm will ever come to him. And he speaks awfully. Peter's so sure of himself, too. He really gets caught up in Jesus, Jesus washing his feet and, oh my goodness, my master and Lord, he should never have to do anything, anything like that. Lord, let me do that. Let me do that for you. And Jesus stops him, like, no, I do need to wash your feet. This, this is important to me. The foot washing is not about being clean or being righteous or being, or like we need to have it to be able to be with Jesus or really get what Jesus is trying to talk about. It's not necessary. And what, sticks, what also sticks with me about Peter is Peter's like, well, if you're going to wash my feet, then you might as well wash my head, wash my face, like make sure I'm totally clean, Lord. But it's not about being perfect. This story isn't about being perfect. It's not even about totally, Jesus wants them to have closure, but it's not even about understanding. Jesus just wants them to know that he's still going to be there. Even if he's going away, he will still give them signs and let them know that he is not gone and lost forever, no matter what happens after this day. So right now, right in this moment, it is all good. And right now it is good enough that it will carry them and hopefully buoy them through what is to come. Even though because we know the whole story and they didn't, it certainly didn't quite work out that way. Very shortly after this, everybody runs, everybody runs away, abandoning Jesus. Judas does still betray Jesus and Peter will eventually deny Jesus. And it just kind of all goes to hell in a handbasket really in just a matter of hours. But that love is still there. That love is still there. Does anybody ever know why it's called Monday Thursday? You can give me a yes or no. Do you know why it's called Monday Thursday? Anybody? Nobody's ever told you what a Monday is? They have, but you keep forgetting. Well, thank goodness that we're here. <laughs> Monday Thursday isn't Last Supper Thursday or anything like that. Monday Thursday, Monday is actually partially Latin for command and the command to love. This is a day for us to remember that love is so precious and so close to us that it's right around the table with us, that it's there letting us know that we are going to be okay. And when Jesus washes the feet of our disciples and we are, do the same to others, show that same sort of closeness, intentional love with each other, we remind each other that we're worthy of it all, too. I think Monday, Thursday, and the foot washing is about reminding us that we are worthy. That even though we might scatter and go away and wander, 
betray one another, stab each other in the back, um, gripe and fight and deny and withhold love that we're still worthy of it. We're still worthy of love and there's nothing that we can ever do to lose, to lose that love of Jesus. There's always gonna be a spot at the table for us because Jesus chose to serve. I think to fully understand what it means to serve one another, it also means that we have to be willing to be served by each other too. That we have to be open enough to receive love and care from one another. I always, in one family, there's always that caretaker that one who's always looking out for everybody. I'm sure you all know who that person in your family is, and I'm sure I know plenty of you, and you might very well be that person in your family too, and you're like, oh no, he's talking directly to me. And what always struck me during, during chaplaincy, when I, when I had to do my chaplaincy unit, is so often it would be that caretaker, that caretaker member of the family who had landed in the hospital. And I would ask them, who, who takes care of you? And they would have to pause and, and really think and they'd be kind of, kind of lost for words. Because we have Jesus, we know that we don't have to be the savior for everybody. We don't have to wash, we don't have to wash everybody's feet. Our command tonight to love one another as I have loved you, Jesus says, also means that we have to be willing to have our feet washed. We have to be willing to, to share the roles of leading at the table, to know that we might not have it all, that we're not perfect and we don't have to be. But we're still worthy all the same. There's a lot of different kinds of love in the world. There's, and I think it's good to talk about a lot of them. But tonight, the love is about the, that intentionality, that desire that Jesus wanted to let his best friends in the entire world know before he went on into the darkness, encountered the, chiefs, the chief priests and the elders and Pilate, the guards, and everything that was to happen to him the next day. He may not have known how it all was gonna play out, but he knew something was gonna happen, that it was all gonna be all right. And after all of this, we don't get the glimpse of the whole, this whole dinner, this whole last supper, but after this, Jesus reminds them that they will still be connected to him, that he will give them the Holy Spirit to guide them and protect them in the future, to lead them on, and he prays for them. He prays for them, he prays for Judas, he prays for Peter, he prays for all of them, despite everything that's going to happen. That love is so powerful that it transcends, it transcends and it lasts, it empowers and encourages us, and we'll always have it there in our back pocket in those moments that we need the most. When we feel like we're doing, when we're part of something too big to do ourselves, to care for one another, when we face our own tragedies, Jesus is there. And you might feel that I can't, I can't do it, I can't pull it off. I don't know if I'm worthy of all of this respect and all of this love and all of this care. But Jesus absolutely says this night, you are worth every last of it. You are worthy of it all. And all of this, all of this life that he lived and everything that is to come, he says it plainly right here and in this night. It is all worth it because I have loved you. And that love is an everlasting love that will carry us through even our darkest nights and our darkest hours. It forgives, and it heals, and it is merciful. And even looking into the precipice of Good Friday, it will still be there, and it always will be. So thanks be to God for all of these signs that Jesus gives us, 
for the love that we have been granted to share with each other. And may we remember that sometimes we got to let ourselves be taken care of too. You're worth it. You are so, so worth it to all of us and especially to Jesus. Amen. And now we'll sing hymn number 659, Will You Let Me Be Your Servant? And now let us enter into a time of prayer on behalf of the church, the world, and all God's people in need. God, you give us gifts of great abundance to, ch to share and so much joy between one another. May we trust that your joy will always bring everlasting happiness and peace, even in the face of sorrow, shame, and everything that the world lays at our feet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who are suffering aloud and in silence, those in need of healing who are sick and anxious and lonely. Give them your peace and your spirit, that peace that surpasses all understanding, and good people around them to guide them to that place of comfort and rest and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your congregations, your churches, and your missions in this county, in this state, in this country, and all across the world. May we all abide by your commandment to love one another as you have loved us in all the expressions and the fullness of what that means. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for all of the saints who have come before us, who are alive among us, who have embodied that love and that commandment for us all of our lives, who have shown care to us, who have wept with us, who have laughed with us, who have prayed with us, who have cried with us and who have believed with us that there are such greater things and greater happiness to be found when we all care for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift all these prayers to you, O Lord, and so many more, entrusting them to your love and your care 
and your grace and your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And the peace of Christ be with you all. Let's share a sign of peace with one another, after which we'll receive our offering. Let us pray. God, out of your great love, you have blessed us with so much abundance. Our time, our talents, our possessions, for which you have gifted us to share with this world. So may we use these gifts for the betterment of all of your people, so that your name may be praised and your love may be shown, and that love may grow wilder than we ever thought possible. In your name we pray this. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. For on this very night, after being anointed by Mary and betrayed by Judas and comforted by those disciples, Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to those disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And now gathered around this table together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As I said earlier, you are all worthy of all of this love. And there is always a space at this table for you that Jesus has made and always promised. So come, taste, and see, and be with one another and experience all of its goodness here and now that is so, so precious. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace tonight, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy, on this evening where we hear and see your command to love one another, 
We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who spent the entirety of his life embodying its power and its fullness. He himself was your gracious gift of love to the world so we could touch, hear, taste, and feel love through the language of our humanity. We thank you for the courage you gave him in his final days and hours to remain close and care for his disciples and for letting them care for him too in the communion of friendship. He befriended the world, making us one with you and each other and humble, everlasting love. So as we leave this table now into the darkness of night, well, more like twilight, may our whole lives be lived in remembrance of you, like your body and blood, and help us always have faith that this everlasting love is greater than our gravest betrayals, our willful denials, and our painful losses and deaths. For no matter where we wander or who we become, we will never find ourselves beyond and unworthy of everything your love grants us, and we will forever have a place with you, beside you at this table. Amen. We'll now sing hymn number 336, Lamb of God. So now, before we go out on our way, remembering everything that Jesus has done for us and what he will do for the sake of the world, I leave you with this blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And may you always know that peace is for you. Amen.
choir, you may be seated. <laughs> All good. And now a reading from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry, cry out by day, but you do not answer. Yet by night I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you, but were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and not human, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh. Let me to scorn, and they curl their lips, they shake their heads, they mock, trust in the Lord, let the Lord deliver, let God rescue him, if God so delights in him. Yet you are the one who drew me forth from the womb and kept me safe on my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a slashing and roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is like melting wax. My strength is dried up and withering. My, stung, my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of death. Packs of dogs close me in. A band of evildoers circles round me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones while they stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among them. For my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far away. O oh, my help, hasten to my aid. Deliver me from the sword. Deliver my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls, you have rescued me. I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them, but when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, but those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim for generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to
to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted, the Lord has done it. We go in peace.